Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi, folks. I'm Bob Schultz, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. We are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. How to use a TENS unit with hip pain, both side and front, and correct pad placements. This uh, correct pad placement. This could be for hip bursitis, hip arthritis, IT band syndrome, TFL pain, tensor fascia lata pain. Oh, you like you know, that word, Bob. Yeah. So anything <laughs> along this area we're going to cover. By the way, if, if you've never watched one of our videos, what we're going to do here is we're not going to really show you how to use the TENS unit. Um, the TENS unit, Brad and I have tried dozens of these units, and uh, they're all different to some extent. Mm -hmm. They all work to some extent. Right. Um, some of them don't have very good instructions. So we decided that we're going to endorse just one brand that has – seems like it has everything. I mean, right. It's, it's, it's a good unit, instructions. uh Everything we like the company. They're eating, they're yeah. nice to work with to get new pads, etc. Reasonable price, and uh, so it's called I Relieve. And if you want to know how to use their units, they have three main units that we like. They have the thirteen thirteen, the eighty eighty, and the fifty fifty. So if you go to bobandbrad.com, go to the program section, and then go to the tens section, and under that you'll find a video descriptions that say thirteen thirteen. 50-50, and 80-80. And then we go through in detail how to actually use this. Right. Um, we're just going through pad placement for the hip on this one. Right. Not how to use the device itself. Yeah. If you have a TENS unit from somebody else, you're going to have to follow their instructions. Sure. You can't cover instructions for hundreds of, of TENS units. Right. So, uh, by the way, along with our video, there's a printout. If you go to the comments section, well, I guess it's under the – on the website itself, you'll find it. Under the video right. link, there's a PDF link. Yep. So you print on, you, uh, click on that, and you'll get a printout. So you won't even have to watch our video more than once because it shows you where to put the pads. After right. That. Just print it out, and you can use that for reference. Yep. So let's start off with this. Let's say hip pain, which generally is off to the side or maybe in the front. Right. Let's start off with it. Let's say it's off to the side, Brad. Yep. Uh, you want to start with just maybe two pads? Sure. So... Here we've got the unit and we've got the leads on there. We're not going to connect the leads to the pads just because for we're talking about placement on this, not connection and use of the unit. So most units have two leads, they call it, and one lead attaches to two pads. So we're going to start off with just channel one, going to a lead, going to two pads. There you go. So you'll have it hooked up. Let's say the pain is, is right here. I'm going to start. And again, there's uh, you, you're going to have to do trial and error. You may want to go right over the top of the pane, and then you may want to go below it. Just make sure the pads aren't close. If they're touching, that's way too close. Half inch is too close. You want to have the same distance as the a width of a pad. Apart, yep. Yeah. So you can go down here. I could put it here. I could put it here. I could put it here. And make sure you're directly on the skin. I didn't feel like exposing my... Rear end to everyone. I appreciate that, Brad. <laughs> I really much appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, so make sure your skin's very clean. Wash it with soap and water. Uh, keep it, get it very dry, and then you can go ahead. Yeah, and the oils from the skin can help break down the stickiness of the pads. So right. You want, you know, it just, and plus, it'll conduct better. Right, for sure. So, Lasts longer. Everything's good about it when things are clean. What we failed to say here, Brad, is that uh, there's really no co absolute correct way to put mm -hmm. the pads. You're going to want to experiment to figure out which one works best for you. Yep. You may want to try two pads, you may want to try four pads, whatever works yep. for you. Now, again, now that was one, putting the one pad right over that painful area. The next option is to surround it with two pads. Let's say here's the painful area, one here, one here, or I could go here and here. I mean, you can, however you want to put it so that it surrounds it. If the pain is pretty global and it's like a larger area on the hip, then you may want to use all four pads. The yellow uh, on your uh, electrodes, they're not going to be color-coded. They'll be black. Sometimes they're white, um, but they don't have yellow and green like we have. We yeah. did that for uh, educational instruction purposes. So yellow on our in our case is channel one. Yep. And the green is channel two. And you'll see why it's important to have 
the channels correct here because the current is going to run between the channels here. So right. between channel one and between channel two. So it forms an X. Right. Now, now you're going to energize all four electrodes and see how it works. Now, if that is not comfortable, it's not working real well, you can just rotate 90 degrees. There we go. And sometimes little subtle dis differences like this uh, can be very, very helpful. So again, you got current running this way and this way. Now you formed a cross. Right. All right. The cross oh. and the X. Yeah, the cross <laughs> and the X. So. All right. All right, let's go to the groin, Brad. A lot of times it's interesting. You can have one of the fact the big signs of hip pain, a hip problem, is having pain in the groin. So, uh, so can, yeah, we're talking not so much down in here in the, right, the groin area right. here. Or we're talking the front of the hip because yeah. the hip and the groin are, you know, uh, get close together. And the old saying of the hips connected to the knee and the, the hips connected to the groin. Right. Um, one thing you have to be very careful with this is the femoral crease, which is right here, the part which bends, where the actual yeah. bending is. You do not want to put a pad, again, you're not going to put it over your clothing, over the skin there, because when you bend it, it's going to interfere with the connection of the electrode. So you're either going to go above the femoral crease or below it. So if that hip pain is right here, we can't go right on it. We're going to go here. Above and this is assuming that you're going to be active. If you're going to lay in bed, you, you could right. put it on the crease. Yeah, that's true. It's a good point, Bob. But, but I, if you're going to, especially walk around or you're going to be sitting, obviously, you can't, you can't right. put a, uh, one in the crease there. Let's see. You can flex there and it won't get into the crease. You could go there and there. And again, they do have a plastic uh, sheath, she, sheath yeah. here that. The pads always either on this or on your skin. Don't leave them lay around. Yeah. Put them away. They'll and dry out, and uh, it, 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 this just helps protect right. them by, by keeping them on the pad. So because ephemeral creases are you're limited, I could not do this because it's going to get in that bend. So I could go here, and I could shift it here. Now I'm going to put the currents going from channel 1 to channel 1, yellow to yellow, green to green. So I'm going to go here and keep my distances. This one's getting kind of far away. You could try that and see how it goes. You may have to move it a little bit closer to get it in a formation like this. Now this one, eh, it's close. You're going to have to see. What happens is when electrodes uh, don't have good connection, either because uh, it's, there's movement on it, weight bearing or whatever, they tingle more. And they can be a little uncomfortable. Yeah, it's like when they start to wear out, too, when yeah. they don't stick as well anymore. Yeah. You'll be able to tell because it just doesn't feel right. Yeah. It's, like the, it's, it, it's kind of a weird tingling instead it, of the tingling that you want. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's just a matter of working with it. Now, we also have mentioned in the past in some of our videos, like let's say the pain is coming from your back into the groin. You could put two pads on your back and two pads on the groin um, at the same time. Right. So, so from here... Two here and two here. We have yeah. another video that focuses on putting the pads on the low back and the yeah, buttock on area. The buttock. Um, so you can check what's that, that one going to be titled? Uh, pretty much how to use a TENS unit with butt, buttock pain. Buttock pain, yeah. okay. So Good. you want to check that out. As far as exercises, um, there's two stretches that we really like to do for hip, uh, hip problems. Oh, yes. One is a hip flexor stretch. Now, you can do this one of two ways. One, you can do it on the on the bed, um, and what you want to do, let's say I'm going to stretch this side. I'm going to get to the edge of the bed, and you can keep your shoulders on the bed quite <laughs> quite well. I don't yeah. want you to fall off. Here. Right. Falling off so, the bed's not good. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to take one leg off like this, and see how I'm stretching the muscle there? Yeah. And you pull this up, it actually stabilizes the pelvis. Right. And you're going to see, I'm a little bit tight there. Watch this once. See how that comes up? The, the knee is coming up yeah, over here. Because I'm a little bit tight in the hip flexor, even though I stretch this daily, uh, it could maybe use a little more stretch. Yeah, um, and you know you don't want to have tight clothing on with this. You right. have something loose or even short so that the uh, clothing doesn't interfere. And if I want to get the other side, I would just put this leg off on the other side and, and lift up on this one. Right. Now you can also do the stretch using, I always like to use a pad on the floor. Or a pillow. Which way should I go, Brad? Should I put this leg forward? 
Yeah. You probably so, right? I'm trying to I'm wondering, I'm wondering. I wonder if I should do it because I got stripes on my hip. Right, right. if you want to. Yeah. It's a, we're going to stretch this like that. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah you show it. You sure? Yeah. Uh, you're do, you always do this one. I, I usually don't do this one. <laughs> uh, on our other videos I'm right. referring to. So, But it shows really well with the stripes. So this is a part. Uh, uh, you can do this. We like to do this to get that uh, hip flexor muscle a little more directly. And good shoulder posture. I put one hand here, and I think about pushing forward on my waistline. Yep, absolutely. And there's the stretch. If you don't do this without something on your knee, uh, a pillow or a, a cushion or a carpet, uh, it's pretty uncomfortable, at least for me. Especially as you get in the 50, yeah. in the 50 yeah. plus range. Yeah, if you're 20 years old, you might. Now, you not can have do a, a figure four stretch, oh, too. Oh, yeah. A real simple stretch. Just take your ankle, put it on the opposite knee or a little bit above the knee, actually. Yep. And you're going to pressure on, pressure off. Keep good posture, pressure on, pressure off. And the same goes with the previous stretches. You can do the pressure on, yep. pressure off, you know, five to 10 repetitions. Again, you're only going to do these if it feels like a good stretch. If it creates sharp pain, that means it's not ready for it yet. Right. And you'll find quite often you, if you have one problematic hip, that one's probably tighter. Mm -hmm. That might be up like this right? versus this one, which is down like that. Right. So that's the one you're going to really want to work on. So. Exactly. All right. Did we cover it all, Brad? I think we covered it well. We hope they think the same thing. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Take care.